Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at something called a smart object. So a smart object allows you to use object linking and, and embedding inside of a Photoshop document. So anytime I have something uh, that I want to duplicate and replicate, and then I want to pass the, um, uh, uh, the edits from one object onto the others, I can use a smart object. Um, and so what happens is you have this parent-child relationship where whatever you do to one object becomes uh, done to all of the objects. So I'm going to double click and open this image. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to uh, resize the image, make it a little bit smaller so it's a little bit more manageable. I'm going to take it, put it on a separate layer. I'm going to redo the background and I want the object to be separate from the background so I can turn it into a smart object. So I'm going to grab my object selection tool. I'm going to trap select the airplane. And so it's done a really good job of that. And I'm going to jump that up to a new layer, Control J. And now that it's on a new layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squash it down, Control T. And I'll make it about half of its size. And I'll move it out of the way. And so the original image is still on the bottom layer. I'm going to turn off the top layer. And I'm going to get rid of the image on the bottom layer by applying a gradient over the original image. So I've taken the image and put it on a new layer. I'm going to go down to the bottom layer. And I'm going to sample the colors in the document. I'm going to hit my eyedropper tool and sample the two different colors, blue. So I'm going to uh, sample by clicking one part of the image, swap the foreground and background color, and sample another color, uh, blue. Then I'm going to grab my gradient tool find the gradient that I've just mixed. I'm going to use a linear gradient, just drag across. And now I've taken the image out and separated it from the background. And I'm ready to make myself do my smart object. So I'm going to save this file, save as, and I'll call it smart object one. I'm saving it as a, a PSD file. It has to be a PSD file. And save. And there's my smart object. No, actually, I haven't made a smart object yet. Let's make a smart object now. So I can go under layer, and I can choose smart objects, convert to smart object. I want to click on the layer with the plane. Or I can go over to the layer, right click, and choose convert to smart object. So now it's a smart object. So what is a smart object? A smart object retains its original dimensions. So if I scale this, edit uh, free transform and I scale this image and, and you'll see that it says 51 percent click OK and then if I go back and and rescale this image again edit uh, free transform you'll see that it says 51 percent so it remembers the, the dimensions of the original object and usually um, let's say I type in 100 percent there and type it 100% here. It's going to be back to the original size it was when we first started. So when I want uh, the original dimensions of the object to be remembered, one of the things I can do is I can make it a smart object. So let's do something. I'm going to take this uh, plane. I'm going to copy. I'm going to drag down and make a copy. So this is a smart object. And I'll put it, say, up about that high. And let's copy it again, drag down, make another copy. And so I've made uh, three copies of the plane, and I'll make the one in the middle a little bit smaller, Control T, free transform. And then I'll go to the top one and make that even smaller, Control T, free transform. And so what is the advantage of this? So let's say that I decided I wanted to change something about the plane. Let's say I wanted to take the name off of the airplane. I'm going to, now you can use any of the smart objects to edit, but um, so if I double click, I can isolate that smart object. And so now if I go in, say, for instance, and I take the, I'll do this real quick. I'll just uh, take the letters off of the edge of the, uh, off of the plane. I'll just do a selection real quick. And then I'll just 
use my eyedropper to sample the color in there and fill it with that color. Select, deselect. Then I can come in and take off this part too. Fill it with that color. And so now what I've done is I've made a significant change. And the thing is, is that let's say, I, you know, uh, normally what I have to do is make a change to all of the planes in the image. But because of the fact that I've made it a smart object, when I close this, I have to make sure I save. I close. This is save changes. It's, and I say yes. And then when I go back to the original plane, you'll see that all of them have received that edit. So anything I do now, I double click. I change the color of the plane, for instance, so I go to image, I go to adjustments, go to hue saturation, uh, and then I change the color of this, this plane. Oops, I, I, I missed a spot there. So I can fix that now if I want. I can grab a um, quick selection tool, click there, delete that, select, deselect. All the planes will receive that edit. Um, so now let's go in and let's change the color of the plane image adjustments. Uh, let's look at hue saturation. I'll click the colorize button. I can make the plane a different color. Click OK. And when I close it, I say yes. And all the planes have received that edit. And that's the idea behind. There's other things you can do with smart filters too. Smart objects, I'm sorry, smart objects. Um, and that's just one example of, of the idea of object linking and embedding inside of Photoshop. And it's called a smart object. And I can isolate in, uh, an element, make it into a smart object, copy it, and when I edit one, all the others will receive the same edit.